Hello everybody, we're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1876, and it's going to be a barn burner. As all new candidates go at it to see who, will, who would succeed you. This is S. Grant in the White House. Let's find out who that is right now. Now, as always, we're going to start off with the incumbent party, and that is the Republican Party. The incumbent, Ulysses S. Grant, elected in 1868, re-elected in 1872, and during 1875, it was widely assumed that Grant would run for a third term as president in spite of the poor economic conditions that were going on at the time, the Panic of 1873. The numerous political scandals that had developed since he took office, like Credit Mobilier and the Whiskey Ring, and a long-standing tradition set by George Washington not to stay in office longer than two terms. In the fall of that year, however, Grant's advisors told him that although there was probably enough support for him within the party to secure a renomination, they doubted his ability to win the election. And the sudden death of, vice pre of his vice president, Henry Wilson, in November of seemed to sap any remaining desire Grant had to hold on to his office. And he announced later in the month that he would not seek re-election. So in 1876, the Republican nomination, wide open. And uh, listing the candidates here, we have the governor of Ohio, Rutherford B. Hayes. Maine Senator James G. Blaine, the Secretary of the Treasury, Benjamin Bristow of Kentucky, Indiana Senator Oliver P. Morton, New York Senator Roscoe Conkling, the Governor of Pennsylvania, John F. Hartrampt, Hartrampt however you say that last name, sorry if I butchered it, um, Postmaster General Marshall Jewell of Connecticut, Ambassador Elihu B. Washburn of Illinois, and Congressman William A. Wheeler of New York. Um, and at the end of the day, it is going to be Rutherford B. Hayes, a reformer um, within the Republican Party who was nominated for the presidency. And William A. Wheeler is going to be his running mate. Now that we have our Republican ticket of Hayes and Wheeler, let's move on to the Democrats. Now, the Democrats are looking for their first presidential election victory in 20 years. Um, they put out their list of candidates, the governor of New York, Samuel J. Tilden, the governor of Indiana, Thomas A. Hendricks, Winfield Scott Hancock of Pennsylvania, William Allen of Ohio, Delaware Senator Thomas F. Bayard, and New Jersey's Joel Parker. But at the end of the day, it is going to be Governor Tilden who receives the Democratic nomination and is going to be Governor Hendricks. That will be chosen as his running mate. Um, the platform for the Democratic Party called for immediate and sweeping reforms in response to the scandals that have plagued the Grant administration. Um, also, the platform pledged to replace the corruption of the Grant administration with honest, efficient government and to end the rapacity of carpetbag tyrannies in the South. It also called for treaty protection of for naturalized United States citizens visiting their homelands, restrictions on Asian immigration, tariff reform, and opposition to land grants for railroads. Now that we have our Democratic ticket of Tilden and Hendricks, let's put Rutherford B. Hayes, let's put Samuel Tilden into the ring, and let's see who comes out on top. Now, heading into the campaign here, Tilden, who had prosecuted machine politicians in New York and sent legendary political boss William M. Tweed, or better known as Boss Tweed, um, to jail, he ran as a reform candidate against the background of the corruption of the Grant administration, but both parties backed civil service reform and an end to Reconstruction. Also, both sides mounted mudslinging campaigns with Democratic attacks on Republican corruption being countered by Republicans raising the Civil War issue, a tactic that was ridiculed by the Democrats who called it waving the bloody shirt. Uh, Republicans chanting not every Democrat was a rebel, but every rebel was 
a Democrat. Remember the Civil War? Um, over at this point for 11 years now. So the memories of the Civil War and the hatred um, of the, for each other as a result of the war is still there. Um, Republicans thinking that if the Democrats were to win the White House, that every, that every gain um, that was made since the Civil War would be pretty much reversed. Now, in order to gain victory in the South, um, the Democrats were highly reliant on paramilitary groups such as the Red Shirts and the White League. Using the strategy of the Mississippi Plan, these groups actively suppressed black and white Republican voter turnouts by disrupting meetings and rallies and even using violence and intimidation. I mean, this is what's been going on in the South throughout the whole of Reconstruction. And at this point, um, Americans were wanting Reconstruction to end. They were tired of paying for it. They were tired of hearing about it. They just wanted it to be over, finito, so to speak. But these paramilitary groups, these white supremacist groups, saw themselves as the military wing of the Democratic Party. Um, neither Tilden nor Hayes actively stumped as part of the campaign due to tradition at that time. So their surrogates went out there and did the campaigning for them. Now, before we get into the results, we're going to talk about Colorado. Um, Colorado became the 38th state on the 1st of August, 1876, with insufficient time or money to organize a presidential election in the new state, Colorado's state legislature selected the state's electors. These electors, in turn, gave their three votes to Hayes and the Republican Party. This was the last election in which any state chose electors through its state legislature. So after 1876, all states used the popular vote to determine their presidential electors. And with that in mind, let's get to the results. Now, the result is where it gets a little bit cray-cray. It looks like at the end of the day, it is going to be 184 electoral votes for Tilden and 165 for Rutherford B. Hayes. So it looked like Tilden was on his way to winning this election and that the Democrats were going to be in the White House for the first time in 20 years. But the problem was electoral votes were in dispute. Um, Louisiana, Florida, South Carolina, and an electoral vote in Oregon um, was in dispute. So, in all, 20 electoral votes were in dispute. So, this was an unprecedented constitutional crisis. So as a result of this, on January 29th, 1877, so closing in on a month until Inauguration Day at this time, pre new presidents were inaugurated in the month of March, not January like they are today. But anyway, Congress passed a special law to form a 15-member electoral commission to settle the result. Five members were selected. Um, from each House of Congress, five from the House, five from the Senate, and they were joined by five members of the Supreme Court. So we had five Democrats and five Republicans on the commission from the House and the Senate. Adding to that, we had two Republicans and two Democrats from the Supreme Court. So overall, seven Democrats, seven Republicans on the commission. That's 14. Now, the 15th member um, of that commission, the justices selected a political independent named David Davis, their fellow Supreme Court justice, but um, the Illinois State Legislature appointed David Davis to the Senate. Also at this time, senators were chosen by state legislatures. Um, anyway, 
So Davis is off of the commission so that so the republic so the justices select Joseph P. Bradley, who was considered the most impartial remaining member of the court. So this gave the Republicans a majority on the commission. Eight Republicans, seven Democrats, and this is how the vote turns out. It's eight to seven along party lines, which gave all 20 um, of the disputed electoral votes and the election to Rutherford B. Hayes. So it's going to be 185 electoral votes for Rutherford B. Hayes, 184 electoral votes for Samuel Tilden. This is the closest margin of victory electorically ever in presidential election history. But Tilden is going to win the popular vote, 50.9% to Hayes' 47.9%. This is only the second. Presidential. This is the second presidential election in American history that a candidate wins the popular vote, but not the presidency. Um, this is the first presidential election since 1852 that a Democratic candidate um, received more than 50% of the popular vote. Um, this election also yielded the highest voter turnout of the eligible voting age population in American history at 81.8%. Now, an informal deal um, was struck down, was struck to, in order to resolve this, elect this election dispute, and that is the Compromise of 1877. And in this compromise, the Democrats... Um, recognized Hayes' election to the presidency if the Republicans pulled remaining federal, the remaining federal troops from the South. Also, the Democrats promised that they would protect the rights of African Americans. And as a result of this, Reconstruction comes to an end. Reconstruction comes to an end and Democratic Redeemer governments um, come into power in the South and they return the South to a political economy that resembled um, that of its pre-Civil War condition. And that included this enfranchising black voters. And this would continue in the South, this period of discrimination and that type of thing against African Americans until the 1960s. So a lot of changes coming to the United States as a result of this election. But at the end of the day, Hayes is the president. Now next time we're going to get into the election of 1880. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. I hope you enjoyed this one as well, and we'll see you next time.